Okay, network automation lab one, configuration backup and restore. So this lab is gonna walk us through how to create a job template to do backups with automation controller. So I'm not gonna press the green button because I'm gonna go through these slides really quickly. A lab diagram is really simple. We have Ansible automation platform. Um, specifically, we're using automation controller and we have one Cisco iOS XE device. It's a CSR, it's running in Google Cloud. It's a marketplace image, so it's, and I'll show how that, what that looks like. It is a Cisco device uh, that tons of network engineers are used to. So a very simple diagram, specifically very simple just to, to make these labs really easy. Now we know backups are not the most interesting use case. There's tons of tools out there. We have things like Rancid, we have DIY Python scripts, pretty much any automation tool or scripting tool in the last 10 years or more probably does backups. But it's also because of that, I wanna start with a use case this simple. It's a very easy use case, it's turnkey. And most of the time when I get asked questions around network automation and Ansible, they're not technical questions, they're culture questions. And I think it's really important to have easy turnkey use cases so that network engineers, everyone on the team is automating together versus just having like one automation person, one expert. So I like to start people with kind of traditional network engineering models where they're doing backups or something simple and we might as well show how you do that with Ansible. So automation controller, I've referenced that several times. This is the web UI um, component for Ansible automation platform. It's basically a GUI, a web UI, so you can actually kick off automation so if you've ever heard of Ansible and you know the command line tools, Automation Controller is our platform component that allows you to kind of log in, have R back, push button IT. When we say that, it just means like, hey, I can click a button just like this little interface we have here and press a button and then it will kick off automation. This becomes really interesting when you have two or more people using the same automation, or you have maybe someone who doesn't know how Ansible works they just want to like back up a config, they can just press a button in automation controller versus running a script on their computer that they might not know how that works. So job templates, we're going to create a job template in this lab exercise. Job templates are basically a, a unit of automation for automation controller. Um, they require an inventory. That's what we're running against. In this case, our inventory is that Cisco switch. Um, they require a credential. This is just like an SSH key or a username password. Um, if it's a API or like a, some sort of web service, this could be a token. Um, there's lots of different types of credentials within automation controller and then a project. And this is where we actually upload playbooks. So playbooks are still the same thing that command line users love. Playbooks are the common language for Ansible, but we're just kind of parameterizing these playbooks into units called jobs. Um, very simple naming, nothing crazy there. Um, so challenge one, I've already preloaded the credentials. I'm gonna show what they look like and I preloaded the projects. Um, they're in a collection called Toolkit or a Network Toolkit. So you can actually see that in Galaxy. It's completely open source. Um, it's easy, it's turnkey and we've preloaded this. So I've already preloaded credentials inventory and the project, but we're gonna create the job template and kind of go through those components and create that backup job um, and a pre-made playbook and, and add it in there. So let's get started. I'm gonna click start. Um, this is our lab platform for ansible.com. I'm gonna log in. As you can see in the top right, that admin username is the default for this environment. And I'm inside automation controller. So this is the web UI. Um, I can see under templates, there's nothing here except like the built-in demo job template. Credentials, there's a bunch of credentials pre-built in here in our lab environment. We have credentials for, for Galaxy. We have credentials, the demo one. We don't really need this. Um, I could delete it. Might as well just get rid of it just so you can see what that looks like. Um, network credential. So this is the username and password uh, for the Cisco switch that I've already added there. Um, there's, a, there's a login for execution environments, which we're not gonna cover in this lab, but we have other labs that'll cover execution environments, but that's basically like the Ansible runtime how we're executing automation underneath. And this is bundled in, like we just hand this to you and it includes all the collections that we need for network automation. Um, but really you're just creating this network credentials, the main one, which is your username and password for that device. We can click edit in here. Um, and you can see I actually didn't put the username. I'm just loading a, a key in, in this case. There's an SSH private key and it's encrypted. 
Um, we have an inventory. Uh, here's the host. We have backup server. So this is where I'm going to store configuration. In this case, I'm actually using uh, the same rel eight box, which is you wouldn't do that in production. This is just because it's a lab environment. So if you actually look at the backup box, I can see that it's that it's just controller. It's using DNS to go back to itself. Um, and then the Cisco box and the username's Ansible. I could also put that in the credential. Um, but you'll see there's no password here because it's stored as that SSH key and tied to that job template, or we're going to do that in a second. And finally, we have, so we, we talked about credentials, we talked about inventory, so projects. So here's Network Toolkit, and this is how easy this is. If I click edit, we can see all the, the different parts, is it's just this URL to GitHub. Um, right now it's on my fork. Um, this will get switched to network automation. I'm just testing out a few things here. So now we're gonna create a job template. And the directions here show you how to do it, but there's nothing in here except to make this. So we're gonna add a job template. Um, we can call it exactly this. We're gonna do run, you can do run or check. We're gonna do run. I'm gonna tie it to that inventory, network inventory. I'm gonna grab that network toolkit project. As soon as I grab that network toolkit project, all these playbooks will load. So I wanna grab network backup. I have a bunch of different pre-made playbooks that use roles in here, but we're gonna use just backup. Um, by default, there's a default execution environment in here. I'm just gonna set that so it's really explicit. Finally, credentials. Now this is a little bit, I'm gonna show you why. It's a little bit strange. We have the machine credential for network, so that's the username and password, that makes sense. But in this specific case, I also wanna add the AAP credential, meaning I want Tower to like talk to itself through the API. So I'm gonna go here to Reddit Ansible Automation Platform and also grab that. And I'm gonna explain why in a minute. So I'm gonna save this job template. And look, now when I click templates, there's a network automation job template. And then for this exercise, that's actually it. We just create this and then verify. So we can actually click check and our lab system will actually check in here and load the next challenge. So what we're gonna do in the next challenge is we're actually going to just execute it. So I could have just done that there, but I figured I wanted to kind of stop for a second and reflect. So these playbooks are using what we call Ansible Collections. Um, we have another YouTube video um, about Ansible Collections demonstration that I'm not gonna cover here um, in too much detail because it's already covered in that other short video and you might already know. But suffice to say, uh, collections are how we store content. So think of collections almost as like an app on your phone. So if I want new Ansible content, like I want a new module that Cisco came out with, with Red Hat to do some cool telemetry thing that just came out, we could install that collection onto Ansible Automation Platform and get it asynchronously. And that makes a lot of sense, especially to new people, but historically like Ansible was all bundled. Um, so the same reason I don't update my iPhone to get the newest Facebook app or the newest Instagram app or the newest calculator app. I don't have to do that with Ansible. Like collections are just unit of automation that can contain playbooks and roles and modules and plugins, et cetera, et cetera. So when we use them now, because it's all asynchronous, we have this idea of a fully qualified collection name or, or the namespace collection and then the thing, in this case, a module. So for example, in this example with Cisco, we have Cisco dot ios which is the operating system or the network operating system and then the thing and in this case we're going to use the config module so it's going to do cisco.ios.config backup true and this is how simple the playbook is now i've pre-made this there's no reason to rewrite this but a big reason people love ansible is it's really simple to read it's like pseudocode you're not having to be a developer or programmer it's a very high level language that allows multiple people to understand exactly what it's doing and put these puzzle pieces together in the way they want. So it's much different from like a network management solution, but it's not as, as deep as doing like a Python solution. And a lot of this code is actually written in Python, uh, the vast majority of it. So if people want to get deep into the code, they can, but most network engineers wanna concentrate on being network engineers and network architects. They don't wanna, they don't wanna also be Python developers per se. Um, so Python knowledge helps you, but Ansible kind of abstracts that and up-levels it so that multiple team members can take advantage of it. So we're gonna get started with the second exercise. And you can see that the job template, I'll click here, is still here. Um, and we're going to click launch template. So when you say push button, like imagine I'm a I'm a new network engineer on the team. I don't, I don't need to build this or understand the playbook or anything. I just click 
uh, launch template. And it's going to take me to the job output window. And look, very, very cool. We can see that this job, it's still running. And now it's finished. We got one little warning. That's that's a bug that will be gone by the time anyone's playing with this. Um, but it saved that configuration. And we can actually see that. If I go into Visual Studio Code here, I can open folder and I can just click here. Um, actually, I put it in backup. Yeah, so backup. Click here. There's a the running configuration. It stored it. Um, and then we can check this exercise and see that it's passed. Correct, it's gonna move it to the next challenge. And I'm gonna summarize what that playbook did. Now you can go and look at GitHub. It's, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, so what it did is it's four simple steps within this playbook. Um, we execute it, we just press that button. Then the automation used that module that I showed previously, the backup uh, true, and it stored the configuration but then we don't want to store the configuration in a, in a container like a runtime environment. So it pushed it into the backup server. So it pushed it literally to that backup folder of the specified backup server, which in this case was the same machine, but it basically did an SSH copy. It could have been any Linux machine anywhere in the world that it had access to. Now the last step is where I had to add the credential. I said I would circle back. Now this is not required, but I think this is cool and it's kind of, um, drinking your own champagne, right? We are using automation to do something more interesting is like now that I've done the backup, how do I push that backup back? And basically I use the Ansible controller collection, which is a way to automate Ansible itself, the, the automation controller. And I created a new job template automatically and preloaded all the backups. So in this case, there's just one backup um, for now, but let's look at what that looks like. So I have a backup. Um, we had a problem or something existing in the network, I want to I want to revert to a backup. All of a sudden there's this new restore job that's automatically created. It's in that same toolkit collection. Um, I can click launch and now we have this idea of a survey. So a survey is a just similar to a survey monkey or a Google form. It is a way to parameterize input into a playbook. So it kind of puts it on guardrails. Um, so here there's just one date stamp, but imagine if I had multiple days or I scheduled this to happen every single day. Um, I'd have multiple options and I say revert network. In this case, I'm treating the network as one unit. You could change that up if you want to do specific devices or you could do a limit. Um, but for this case, we're treating the network as one unit and we have a network of one device. So they're kind of the same for this particular small lab. So I click next and what it's going to do is it just turns that survey into what we call an extra variable. So it says rollback date is this date. So when we launch this job, all it's doing is a config replace. It's taking the configuration that we have stored on backup server and then pushing it to that network device. And it says restoring device from backup date cisco.txt. The Cisco is the host name, the inventory host name. Restore is complete. Um, that concludes this lab. It's very simple. It's supposed to be simple. Config, backup, config, restore. Um, I think these are really powerful. Um, you can look at the source code. It's super simple. It's um, very easy to get started with something like this. And we like to talk about quick automation victories is this is something you can start with and do in a few minutes, right? Is you're not really even, you, you could even just disable restore and just do backups and manually copy them over, but you're starting to get value right away is you're getting folks used to Ansible automation platform. You're getting them into the system and you're getting folks to work as a team doing automation together. And that's the big difference with Ansible versus a lot of DIY automation tools or point tools is that Ansible is really built for teams to automate together, not specifically having one kind of power user. Um, and I think sometimes people miss the forest for the trees and they, they forget that kind of concept of, of why it's important to automate as a team because you're only going to move as slow as the slowest member. If someone's editing the network manually versus doing an automated fashion, everyone kind of has to slow down to that level. So it's really important to get everyone on board on your team together and automate together.